Hey everyone, this is Angela Harders, a PMA consultant here to share with you the truth about PMAs and today I'm going to be exposing yet another lie that so many of us were told about PMAs. Um, I'm in the process right now of doing a course about PMAs and unincorporated associations, um, completely revamping the course that I had before, making sure that all of the information that is in that course is accurate and up to date. And part of that is going through all of the things that people say about PMAs, in particular the supposed experts about PMAs, and uh, making sure that I'm bringing you and sharing you the truth about PMA so that you can make an informed decision that is going to be accurate and that you're able to understand what you're getting yourself into and decide truly what is the best course of action for you and your business being able to operate in faith and freedom. So that being said, one of the phrases that I came across over and over and over is this statement here where people make claims saying that the private domain is a sanctuary from unjustified interference by the state. And they make this claim quoting this court case here, Peers versus Society of Sisters. Um, and just to show you some examples here, I searched this term. You can do that as well in Google and you'll see the very first option that comes up here is David Edwards. Um, those of you who may not know, David Edwards did my founding documents when he founded our private ministerial association that to be honest is not worth the paper that it's printed on. But this is David Edwards. He is the expert. Um, he shows up first in Google for a reason, right? In fact, he shows up first and second in Google for a reason. These are both of his PMA website. So let's take a look at his website here. And um, I'm going to use our find tool. And if you want to search for something in a website, you can just hit control F. Or if you're on a Mac like me, you can hit command F and you can search for a website or search for something, a phrase in a website. All right, so I search for a sanctuary here and notice it says the private domain is referred to as a sanctuary from unjustified interference by the state in Pierce versus Society of Sisters. Okay, so there's that quote. Let's go back and take a look on his next website. PMA Power, this is also David Edwards' website and I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this. And I'm gonna do the find, oops, I find, and we're gonna look for the term sanctuary. Here we see again, also the private domain is referred to as a sanctuary from unjustified interference by the state in Pierce versus Society of Sisters. So again, we see this quote, same thing. But David Edwards isn't the only one that's sharing this. EBPMA is also, has this exact same statement on their website. And I'm gonna zoom in so you can see it better. And we're gonna do a find for sanctuary. And here it is. The private domain is referred to as a sanctuary from unjustified interference by the state in Pierce versus Society of Sisters. Okay, let's go back. Pro Advocate. Pro Advocate is one of the most popular PMA groups. And sure enough, on Pro Advocate's website as well, they're sharing this same misinformation. Here we go. Also, the private domain is referred to as a sanctuary from unjustified interference by the state in Pierce versus Society of Sisters. Okay. Organized Hustle. Another PMA website, Sanctuary, here we go. This is a sanctuary from unjustified interference from the state, quoting Pierce versus Society of Sisters. Going back again, Veritas Health, veritasmedical.com. This is a private health association and here on their website too, the exact same thing. The private domain is a sanctuary from unjustified interference by the state. And again, quoting Pierce versus Society of Sisters right here. This is a farm club. So even private farm associations are using the same thing. And let me see, this one's kind of taking a while to load. Hold on. All right, let me zoom in real quick. And we're gonna do the find feature. We're gonna look for sanctuary. Here we go. 
The private domain is referred to as a sanctuary from unjustified interference by the state. Once again, in quotes, supposedly quoting from Pierce versus Society of Sisters. Okay. Let's go back. Oh, and here's a good one. Joseph DeRuzzo. Now, I'm going to have to make a whole nother video about him, but Joseph DeRuzzo, this is this website here is actually a court case from a man um, that was charged with practicing medicine without a license in his private medical association. So as you can see here, hold on, let me zoom in a little bit more because this was harder to see. As we can see, Joseph DeRuzzo was charged with false allegations. He claims that they were false allegations of practicing medicine without a license. He was found guilty of practicing medicine without a license, and he was sent to three years in prison. Um, but I'm going to make a separate video on him so that you can get the full story of what happened in his case in particular. But this is a letter that is from him where he wrote and he said that they are operating a private medical association. He said that they only have private contract members. It does not involve public persons in any manner. He also makes the claim that the Texas Medical Board has no jurisdiction and has no authority in the private domain of this membership. And here we have it again. The private domain is referred to as a sanctuary from unjustified interference by the state. And he is supposedly quoting Pierce versus Society of Sisters. As you can see, we have so many people that are sharing this statement here. Let's go back to the court case for ourselves. So as I said, as I was making my course, I, I went back through and I read this court case because I wanted to make sure that I could cite the whole thing properly. And I was shocked at what I found. I had to stop working on my course and immediately come in to share this, record this and share this with you. All right, so here we have the Pierce versus Society of Sisters, and you can search for this. I'll actually include the link to this court case as well, because I want you to go back and do your due diligence. Do not believe anything that I say or anything that anyone else says. Do the research for yourself. Do the digging on your own. Invest the time and energy to check and see what is true. So let's go ahead and take a look at this court case. Now, I don't want the syllabus. I want to look at the full case. All right, so here looking at the, at the court case, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do a find in here as well. They say that the private domain is a sanctuary, so let's go ahead and see. Sanctuary. Hmm. It's not here. There is not a single instance in this court case where they refer to anything as a sanctuary. That word is not anywhere in this court case. Well, maybe it's something else. Let's see. They talk about interference. Okay. Interference is used four times in this court case. So let's take a look. Here they have unreasonable interference with the liberty of parents and guardians. They have unlawful interference by appellants with the free choice of patrons. They also have unreasonable and unlawful interference with their patrons. And here, enterprises against interference with the freedom of patrons or customers. Those are the four instances where they're talking about interference. But remember, our supposed quote is unjustified interference by the state. So that's not in there. All right. Well, we'll keep looking. Unjustified interference by the state. They also claim to be talking about the private domain. So let's see if there's any mention in here at all of the private domain. Hmm. Not a single mention of the private domain in this court case. But I don't know if you noticed, there is mention of something being private. Huh, that's interesting. Hill Military Academy is a private corporation organized in 1908 under the laws, statutory laws of Oregon. Now, this was shocking to me because we have all been told that the private domain means that we are unincorporated. We have all been taught that when we incorporate, when we form a corporation, we are removing ourselves from the private domain and we are entering the public domain. And yet here we have Hill, Hill Military Academy, which is a private corporation. 
So that would make me think that either we're not understanding what private means or we're not understanding what corporation means or both. Lucky for you, in my course, I actually go through and explain what does this word private actually mean? Because it's really important that we can understand that word. But in the context of this court case in particular, it's important for us to know that this court case is not about a private membership association. This court case is not about people that are operating um, as unincorporated associations. This is not about people that are operating private education associations. These are people that were operating a private corporation that was incorporated under the statutory laws of their state of Oregon. All right, so let's go back. I want to go to the beginning of this court case, and we are actually going to read the court case. Because when I, when I found out that that phrase is not in this court case, I thought to myself, I wonder what this court case is actually about. So let's take a look, and we're going to go through this together. It is shocking. Here we have, the fundamental theory of liberty upon which all governments of this union rest excludes any power of the state to standardize its education by forcing them to accept instruction from public teachers only. All right, so this is, this is a court case that is talking about being forced to attend public schools. Oh, and before we go on, I want to mention something else to you as well. This court case happened in 1925. Now, this is another important fact for you to know. Think about all of the things that have happened over the last hundred years. Think about all of the freedoms and liberties that have been whittled away over the last hundred years. A lot has changed since 1925. A lot of court cases have set new precedents since 1925. I want you to keep that in mind as we're looking through the details of this particular court case, which so many people use to defend private membership associations. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at point number two. The Oregon Compulsory Education Act, which with certain exemptions, requires every parent, guardian, or other person having control of a child between the ages of 8 and 16 years old to send him to the public school in the district where he resides for the period during which the school is held for the current year and is an unreasonable interference with the liberty of the parents and guardians to direct the upbringing of the children. And in that respect, it violates the 14th Amendment. Now, this is fascinating because this is less than 100 years ago. So less than 100 years ago, Oregon passed a law, a compulsory education act, forcing children to go to school, to go to public school. And the people of that time filed a suit. Actually, in this case, they're filing for an injunction to stop this um, this act from forcing children to have to attend a public school in the district where they reside. And their argument for that was that it was an unreasonable interference with the liberty of parents and guardians to direct the upbringing of their children. And they believed that that was a violation of their 14th Amendment rights. Prior to public schools being mandated, children attended school either in private schools or they were homeschooled by their families. So this is a really revolutionary time in our history where a hundred, less than 100 years ago, children were forced to attend public school for the first time and parents viewed it as a violation of their 14th Amendment right. All right, keep, we're going to continue going here. In a proper sense, it is true that corporations cannot claim for themselves the liberty guaranteed by the 14th Amendment. That is because the 14th Amendment, our rights and freedoms are granted to us as human beings, as people. Corporations do not have constitutional rights in the same sense that we do. We have God-given rights that a corporation does not and will not ever have. And it says here, in general, no person in any business has such an interest in possible customers as to enable him to restrain exercise of proper power by the state upon the ground that he will be deprived of patronage. So here we're seeing that a business cannot simply say that, that it, the government can't pass certain laws because that will mean that he will lose customers in his business. But, this is a very interesting but, it says, but where corporations owning and conducting schools are threatened with the destruction of their business and property 
through the improper and unconstitutional compulsion exercised by this statute upon parents and guardians, their interest is direct and immediate and entitles them to protection by injunction. This is fascinating. The whole point of this court case here, it wasn't the parents that were suing anyone or the parents that were complaining. It was two corporations. Two corporations that owned and conducted schools that said, we need to file an injunction to stop the government from passing this act, forcing all of the kids to attend public schools. Because if all the kids attend public schools, it will destroy our business and our property. That is what this court case is about. It is not about homeschooling. It is not about private membership associations. It is not about unincorporated associations. It is two corporations that owned schools that wanted to stop the state from forcing kids to go to public school because they were going to lose money. All right, so let's con let's continue. We're going to keep reading here. And I'm going to skip through a lot of this just so this video is not so long. But again, I encourage you to go back and read through the whole thing. All right, so the first one here, the Society of Sisters. The Society of Sisters is an Oregon corporation. Again, they are incorporated. This is not an unincorporated PMA. This is a corporation that was organized in 1880 with power to care for orphans, educate and instruct the youth, establish and maintain academies or schools, etc. They talk about here they've long devoted their property and their efforts to secular and religious education and the care of children, and they've acquired valuable goodwill of many parents. All right, so they go in here and talk about all the wonderful things that they do here. Notice here, this is interesting. In its primary schools, many children between those ages are taught the subjects usually pursued in Oregon public schools during the first eight years. Systematic religious instruction and moral training, according to the tenets of the Roman Catholic Church, are also regularly provided. Okay, so these children are being educated in the Catholic Church and in the Roman Catholic faith. They say here that it owns valuable buildings that were specially constructed and equipped for school purposes. The annual income from the primary school exceeds $30,000, which back in that day was a large chunk of change. And notice here they say the Compulsory Education Act of 1922 has already caused the withdrawal from its schools of children who would otherwise continue, and their income has steadily declined. The appellant's public officers have proclaimed their purpose strictly to enforce the statute. So notice, the whole reason why Society of Sisters was, was trying to get an injunction was because they were losing money because children were being forced to go to public schools. The second corporation is this one here, Hill Military Academy, as we mentioned before. Again, they are also a private corporation organized in 1908 under the statutory laws of Oregon. Hill Military Academy was owned, operated, and conducted a for-profit elementary school, college preparatory, and military training school for boys between the ages of 5 and 21 years old. Okay, so this is a military school, a for-profit military corporation, and they are the ones that are involved in this, in this court case here. So they also made the same claims. That in order to conduct their affairs, they have to meet. They have to make contracts for supplies, equipments, teachers, and pupils. The state has declared their intention to enforce the law, and by threatening to force enforce this statute, then they're arguing that their business is being destroyed and the property is depreciating. It says that parents and guardians are refusing to make contracts for the future instruction of their sons, and some students are being withdrawn. This is absolutely fascinating because all this time we have been told over and over and over that this court case in particular is talking about the protections of the private domain. That is absolutely not true. I hope that you can see very clearly that this is one of many, many lies that have been told about private membership associations. I hope that you can see very clearly not only is this quote nowhere this quote that the private domain is a sanctuary from unjustified interference by that state, that does not exist anywhere in that court case. All of these websites, all of these PMA proponents are intentionally or unintentionally lying to you. 
it is so important that you can have true and accurate information so that you can make true informed consent and you can have the knowledge that you need to be able to make the best decision for yourself and for your business. I invite you, if you have a PMA or are considering getting a PMA, please, please book a consultation with me. I would love to speak with you and to be able to go through the truth about what your actual options are because I can guarantee you a PMA is probably not going to be the best option for you. And if you were sold a faith-based association or a faith-based ministry like I was, I will tell you those documents are not worth the paper that they're printed on. And I am so sorry that you were duped that you were lied to, and that you were deceived. And I hope to be able to right the wrongs of those who have gone before us so that we can pave the way for a better future for our children, one where we are operating with integrity and we are operating with truth. So please book a consultation with me. I would love to go over your founding documents if you have a PMA or a 508C1A, or if you're curious about if a PMA is the best option for you or what type of private association or unincorporated association might be the best fit for what you're trying to create, please book a consultation with me today. I'm more than happy to talk through it with you. And also stay tuned. Be sure to check the link below in the description. Very soon I'm going to be releasing my course about the truth about PMAs so you can understand what PMAs really are and the proper way to operate one. I hope that you found this video to be helpful. Please like this video, comment your thoughts below. Please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel so that more people can continue to know the truth about PMAs and we can stop this flood of lies in the freedom community and we can begin to walk in freedom and truth. Freedom and truth, both are so, so, so important. Thank you so much for sharing this video, for subscribing to my channel, and for being committed to making a difference in the world today.